So I'm an architect and I know not much about water. Uh, and this is a picture of uh, office. When you arrive, we, you, we, and if we have the chance to collaborate with, with you all, uh, then you will be asked to uh, take off your shoes. And this is speaking very much about uh, the individuals behind what it takes to do a project, but also about common endeavor. So uh, water is the reason why city exists. They are almost found everywhere where you can find fresh water for drinking and where you can find uh, a lake or river or the seas uh, for trade. And commerce and, re and, and exchange has a fashion or coastline. This is in Lisbon where uh, 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 once upon a time this was the point of departure for the great explorer to uh, the America, then it became the uh, riverfront of, of trade and exchange and industries. And often uh, it's a situation that we find in all of our cities. Uh, in Lisbon, the riverfront was cut by train lines that were separating the, the, the commerce area to, from, from the city. And in the area we live in, in, era, in the era we live in now, in this post-industrial era, uh, everywhere cities around the world are looking to reclaim those lost spaces because cities are now about quality of spaces and quality of living and about exchanging, exchange between people. And water does that, has the power to bring people together and, and, and to make them exchange and get closer to, to themselves. So this is a building we completed in 2017. It's the Matt Museum in, in Lisbon uh, by the River Tagus. And it's very much the culmination of the regeneration of the, the riverfront of Lisbon. Uh, and what we saw is that um, it was as important uh, to make connection with the, the river uh, and, and the steps to the river was going to be as important as the bu building inside, which was uh, a gallery space. We used the water as a plane to uh, bounce back, uh, as a plane to reflect and bounce back the water inside the building and, uh, and get into the depth of the sunken gallery that are below. In bouncing back on the facade, it's, we use water to uh, make it uh, a beautiful thing, which we have not been really talking about today, how water is just a simply enjoyable, beautiful thing that we can play with, uh, articulate uh, lights, uh, and, and make us enjoy the, the moment. Uh, and this became the very basis of a, a very uh, sound, sustainable strategy for the building, where we bring daylight in and, and LED views and where we use the basement galleries to, um, uh, that are sunken to uh, benefit from free cooling uh, from the thermal ground. And we saw instinctively that the, the, this place in Lisbon was to be a democratic place for exchange, uh, for the public to, uh, to, to meet and, and uh, enjoy the view of the, the river. So we put the building low so that the view of the rivers remain for the entire city which uh, lies behind. But before all, uh, this project was about uh, creating a public space uh, and where that has, has had this power of, of really dragging people all together and exchanging because cities today are about that, are about uh, exchanging and, and that's how through uh, uh, communication and change encounter and, and change encounter that you uh, drive change. We've done the exact same thing uh, at, uh, in London at the Victoria and Albert Museum, where here uh, we renegotiated the relationship between uh, the city uh, and the street and the museum. So in, in a way, we took the museum onto the street and we took the street onto the museum. Uh, we created an outdoor room, which is uh, a sort of an outdoor room of the museum, which is carbon free. And placed, it, and placed below ground uh, a gallery uh, for exhibitions. Uh, we spent two years and a half uh, doing research on ceramics to be able to create, uh, which is one of the reasons why the museum exists, to be able to create uh, a, a porcelain floor uh, that was uh, produced in the, in the Netherlands. So um, all, all that to make a point that uh, architecture is also about innovation and research, that you can do things that you have never done before uh, and experiment in, in that field too. Uh, so those are, are the two years and a half uh, of research. 
and this is the gallery below ground, which is again the basic of a very sustainable strategy where uh, we use thermal ground, uh, yeah, thermal mass to, to cool the building, we uh, bring daylight in, uh, we collect water obviously from the roof and the surfaces, we enhance biodiversity with green roofs elsewhere, etc. Uh, etc. Et this is probably the most sustainable def development we've done so far because it's, uh, it's a piece of city itself. Here we we really did back pra back best practice uh, on everything, collected rainwater, um, uh, and enhanced biodiversity, encouraged people to come with public transport and or by bike. Uh, we let uh, uh, the facade is controlling uh, thermal gain and letting daylight in, and the structure is in uh, timber. Uh, all that to make an exemplary uh, building which was then rewarded by um, a BREEAM uh, outstanding accreditation. But sh this should really be the, s the norm uh, now, and we really want to go <coughs> further. And this was um, a sort of exercise that we have done, uh, a sort of attempt to go further into that debate and uh, engage with people. Uh, this was um, a proposal that we did for the pavilion in Milan uh, of 2015, I think where uh, the theme was food for the uh, Universal Expo and, and we, wanted to trans we wanted to give the visitor a sort of visceral understanding of uh, the, the quantity of water that was used to produce the food uh, which, which, and then we called water the, the, the nature silent currency. With this project we wanted to reveal and touch people which the same way that we have done with other projects at Lisbon where we really engage with people or, or, or at V&A uh, and really engage with them in a, in a way to make them realize um, uh, uh, the preciousness of the resource and for the, the pavilion to become a place of exchange between uh, brands, uh, businesses and, uh, and everyday life and or, or use of water. Everyone would share the experience online and, uh, and everyone would then commit to change at their own scale. So the pavilion was a, a simple water container that people would cross through uh, and the 80,000 80, liters of water would, would represent more or less the uh, amount that uh, one would use to produce 33 hamb hamburgers. So we made and transformed that data into a, a sort of visceral experience that people would perceive and realize uh, into something that was palpable. Uh, so you would uh, understand the volume and uh, there was a, a very sort of uplifting uh, experience uh, of crossing the pavilion that would uh, engage you to commit to change uh, as you exit the pavilion. We've been absolutely passionate with this uh, uh, notion of water and how it touches everything since then. Uh, and we are now working increasingly uh, in Paris, which I had a slide about, but it's gone, um, uh, where uh, basically uh, the slide was, I just have to describe it now instead, was uh, a demonstration that happened at Place de la République in Paris where for the um, uh, um, to, for Paris 2021, everyone took off their shoes and left them on uh, the street as a demonstration of the engagement of uh, the individual into the, the debate. And that's going back to the first slide I showed you that uh, for us it's about how um, we can engage with people and as architects we know how to touch them, how to uh, uh, get to them, how to bring them together and I'm here today to understand what is the right message to uh, give them. Thank you.